What's up, what's up, my oh so beautiful people? Today we're going to be answering the question, should I open multiple bank accounts? Should I have multiple bank accounts for different accounts? So we're going to be answering that question today. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so in this first scenario, we're going to say, you know, you have just one bank account, all right? This is like majority of people. A lot of people just have one bank account. And I'm not including like your credit cards or like your brokerages account. I'm just talking about your main bank account where you pull money in and send money in, direct deposit, whatever you do and how you do your money. Okay, so let's say all your money, right, goes into bank account one. This is your bank account right here. You're paying your rent, you're paying your bills, and that's rent or mortgage. You're paying your bills, phone, Wi-Fi, utilities, subscriptions like Netflix, uh, Apple Music, uh, Spotify, whatever, right? And then you're investing. Now, majority of people will do this investing part after they pay their rent and mortgage or their bills, and we're not like that, okay? And I'm gonna talk about that later on, and you can check out another video that I have talking about investing and, and some things I recommend when it comes to investing. But this is a common kind of everyday scenario. People just have one bank account. Now, we're going to show you a different way or I'm going to show you a different way where you can improve your money management, something that I use, and why you should have multiple bank accounts. So this is the first scenario. Again, every time you get paid, it goes into one bank account. Out of that one bank account, you're paying on multiple accounts. You know, your bill, your phone bill, like Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, whatever you got. That's one login, email, whatever account, right? Your rent or mortgage, that's another account, right? Different, you got to go to like Wells Fargo. You got to go to whatever your lender is. That's another account. And then you're investing, right? Stocks, you have like E-Trade and Robinhood and things like that. Uh, crypto, got crypto.com. You got Binance. You got Coinbase. Uh, real estate, whatever real estate investment platform that you invest in, whether that's Fundrise, Ground Floor, or whatever, all these are different accounts that your one bank account is funding out of, is funneling all the money out of. So again, let's move on to the next scenario where you have two bank accounts and what that will look like and how that may improve your uh, money management. All right, now let's say in this scenario, you have two bank accounts. I'm gonna show you how you can improve your money management by having two bank accounts and then you know possibly having three or four, but let's just do a simple kind of flow chart of where your money will go and how you can separate your bills and expenses, you know, your investments and everything by having two bank accounts, all right? So you always hear people say, you know, you should have, uh, you know, emergency fund, right? So I have an emergency fund. And let's just say this is this is your money, okay? And you have direct deposits going into this bank account, okay? Bank account one, all right? So you have a per whatever percentage that is, rather it's 50%, rather it's, you know, 70% of your direct deposit going into bank account number one. And then you can have a percentage of that bank account or, or that direct deposit, excuse me, going into bank account number two, okay? So if that's, let's just say 70% for bank account one, so this can be 30% for bank account two. You can do that directly with your HR resources, whatever job you work at, just talk to your HR rep. You can actually do that, you know, by yourself as well. So what do I mean by that? Let's say, you know, 100% of your money goes into bank account number one, you can just simply move a certain percentage that you want into bank account number two, whatever that percentage is, all right? So 100% can go into bank account one, and then you can say, all right, now I wanna put X amount of percentage into bank account number two from bank account number one. But you have to do that as soon as you get paid, right? And you can do that by automating that procedure. So you can pretty much say every time this direct deposit hit on a Friday, that same Friday it hits, that afternoon I want to move X amount of percentage uh, of money into bank account number two. Now, with bank account number one, let's just say this can be, you know, your rent, 
your rent holding or your mortgage. Mortgage. Uh, this can be your bills, right? You can put all that in big account number one. And then when you put that in big account number one, and I'm, I'm trying to get in the camera, but I really want y'all to see the actual work. You know, forget about me. Uh, when you see, you know, when you put rent in your mortgage at bank account number one, this is your living expenses. So you know that in bank account number one, this covers my living expenses, uh, living expenses. And this can be put on auto pay. And um, if you haven't read the book, I will teach you how to be rich. Ramon talks about how you can put your bills on auto pay that will improve, you know, you spending time logging into each account and, you know, paying each bill, pulling out your card every single time. You can just put this on auto pay. Now, a lot of people aren't at the level of auto pay, which is totally understandable. Uh, you definitely want to get to that point in your financial journey. And also, you know, if you're not there yet, make that a goal, right? Even if you could put one bill on auto pay, try to do that, test it out and see how much it makes your life easier. This is what I do today. Um, I have a, a year of my living expenses inside one bank account. And again, I'm sharing this with you because I do it myself and I found it a lot easier to manage my money. Okay. So moving on. Then in bank account two, we have our investments. Okay, because you want to invest. I don't know what you're going to invest in, but you want to invest, right? Rather it's real estate, stocks, um, you know, you invest it in yourself like school to, um, you know, get a higher paying job or some kind of skill to help you get a higher paying job to increase your skill and increase your, your worth in the marketplace. But you want to put a separate bank account for your investments, right? So again, in bank account one, we have our living expenses. That's covered. We're going to separate that. And in bank account two, we have our investments. And or you can also put, you know, your have fun money in bank account number two, right? Have fun, right? So you know that in your head is happening automatically in the background that you are taking a percentage of your money and moving it to bank account number two so that your investments and your funds or your half fun money is covered, right? This is happening in the background. So you don't got to log into one big account, log into another one, do this, do that. And you can manage your money a lot better because you know, bank account number two is where you spend the money on for investing and you're having fun money, going out to dinner or planning a trip. And your bank account number one is on auto pay is automatically happening for you. And you don't even have to worry about you know, logging in and doing everything because this account is funded because you know that X amount of percentage of your money or direct deposit is going into bank account number one. So again, this is scenario number two. We're going to go through it one more time. All right. So you have direct deposit, you have your money, whatever you earn going into bank account number one, whatever percentage that is. And then you can have it also going into bank account number two because you could break it through, you know, different percentages. So you could say 75% or 70% of my direct deposit is going to go into bank account number one and 30% of my direct deposit is going to go into bank account number two. Boom. Easy work done in the back end. Make sure you consult with your HR person uh, to make sure you set that up correctly with direct deposit. All right. And then, and you can do this as well. You could put a hundred percent into bank account number one and then simply transfer that out into bank account number two at X percentage, okay? So those are two different ways you can separate your money from bank account one and bank account number two. That's what BA stands for, not Bank of America. Just bank account one, bank account two, okay? So in bank account one, you can house all your living expenses and your bills, right? This is where your Wi-Fi go. This is where your mortgage or your rent payment go. This is where your utility bills are goes. These are your living expenses, right? That's what this is going to be, living expenses, okay? And then bank account number two, that could be your account for your investments. That could be your account for your half fun money. This could be your account for, uh, you know, half fun. I know I said trips as well, right? Trips as well. And all this is happening in the background and is on automation. When you do that, at first you're going to be like, 
man, why is my bank account, you know, you, you're going to see the difference. You're going to notice the difference. You're going to be like, oh man, my bank account, um, my direct deposit, excuse me, isn't the same, right? Like I, there's money missing, but then you're going to be like, ah, oh yes, I have it going into bank account number two, right? So after a while, you're going to forget about bank account number two and you're going to get used to living off of bank account number one and setting up your finances and your living expenses due to the money that's going into bank account number one, forgetting about bank account number two where your investment and have fun money is. Now picture this. Picture you're like, you know what, like after six months go by or let's even say a year and you've been living on your bank account number one with your living expenses, they're on auto pay, they're kind of doing their own thing. You build yourself a three to six months uh, living expenses emergency fund and it's all sitting in here. And you're like, man, you know, like I could be making more money or or I feel like I'm losing money or there's not enough money in my bank account. And you're like, oh man, I forgot. I have a bank account number two. And you go in there and you're like, oh man, I have like, you know, $20,000, $10,000, $10,000, $20,000, $30,000. And bank account number two, I completely forgot about, right? This could be just like one of those shockers that people are like, oh man, like I forgot all about this money. And then, like I said before, you can invest that money. You can have fun. I'm trying to find a marker, which one I want to, again, like you can invest that money. Uh, you can have fun with that money. You could go on trips with that money because in bank account number one, your living expenses are covered. Okay, you don't have to worry about those bills. You don't have to stress out about living paycheck to paycheck because in bank account number one, that is covering your bills and your mortgage and everything like that for you to, you know, fund your bank account number two. So next, we're going to simply just take this whole scenario number two and we're going to actually put a dollar sign on it. And I'm going to show you what actual dollars, like a thousand dollars, you know, you get paid, you know, $2,400 a month. We're going to actually do that with the numbers next. Okay, so before we get into the money example, please do me a solid and like and subscribe to my channel. If you found any of this informa information, excuse me, useful so far, please like the uh, video and also share it with somebody. Um, this is going to help me grow my YouTube channel as I'm trying to bring more content and teach you more about money and get some lights and all this stuff like that. So it's going to help me a huge amount by just simply liking this video and subscribing to my channel. So, okay, uh, please do that. All right, now um, let's go into the money example. Okay, so if you live in Portland, Oregon, all right, let's say you live in Oregon and you make $60,000 a year, you're going to be taxed at 25.2%. We don't have sale tax here, so... To most people, uh, you know, in different states, you'd be like, man, 25.2% is pretty high, but we don't have no sales tax here. So that means per month, you're going to be taking home $3,738. And then bi-weekly, that's going to be $1,725, okay? So we have the numbers. So let's say in bank account number one, you have your living expenses here, Okay. So, and then bank account number two, you're going to have your half fun money. You're going to have your trips. You're going to have your investments. All right. So if we do, you know, if you get paid bi-weekly $1,725 and we do 30% in bank account number two, this is the 30% here, you're going to be putting $517.50 inside bank account number two. And then the 70% is going to go into bank account number one, which is $1,207.50. Okay, follow me so far. Bank account number one is going to be 70%. Bank account number two is going to be 30%, which I also put right here. If you get paid bi-weekly, that's $1,725 if you make $60,000 a year. And 30% of 1725 is going to be $517.50. And then 70% is going to be $1,207.50. Okay? If you want to look at it as per month, we're going to... Okay, you can't even see the bi-weekly. Sorry about that. <laughs> I should have moved it up. 
Okay. Um, but if you're going to do uh, per month, you're going to get paid $3,738 uh, a month. And that's going to be 30% of that is going to be $1,121.40 per month. And the remainder 70% is going to be $2,616.60. Okay. So we have that breakdown so far. This is how the money is moving between bank account one and two due to your uh, your monthly payment or your bi-weekly payment. And again, sorry, you can't see that, but hopefully you're following along. Uh, I'll get the screen right next time because uh, I want to continue on. Okay, so let's just say, you know, your rent is, you know, $1,200. Okay, and you're like... I want to make sure that my rent is paid, you know, in the first of the month, right? Normally rent is paid between the first to the fourth of the month, right? So if you're getting paid bi-weekly and you're doing a 70 and 30% breakdown between bank account one and bank account two, your first bi-weekly check can cover your rent, okay? Now I know you're like, I got more than my rent. I got, you know, I got uh, my utilities and I got all that stuff. Some of those bills are due later on in the month, depending on how you set it up. But in this example, let's just say your rent, you're going to cover that with your first biweekly uh, check, and that's going to be $1,207.50. You could cover your rent because your rent is $1,200, okay? Now, again, this is biweekly, so per month, you're actually going to have $3,000. $738 and that's going to be 70% of that is going to be $2,616.60. So you're just going to take this $2,616.60 and subtract your rent from that. You're going to do that with your utility bills as well. And this is why a budget sheet or a budget tracker is very important. You want to know how much your living expenses are per month in order to do something like this because then you would know how to you know manage your money more smoothly right this is what this is all about managing your money better okay so all of your rent and your utilities and things like that is going to go into bank account number one which is at 70 percent of your take-home income okay and then bank account number two which is at 30 percent which you're going to move over right you're going to just put that 30 percent in bank account number two set it and forget it that's going to be for your investments, having fun money, and you want to take a trip or whatever. But you know that you're saving or you're putting away 30%. All right. So I hope all this was helpful. I know there was a lot of movement uh, throughout the board. But in the comments below, please ask any questions you may have about this whole scenario. And also, please let me know in the comments below if you have more than one bank account. If you do have one more, more than one bank account, excuse me, in the comments put below, put, I have more than one bank account. If you don't, hopefully you found this useful and you can take this uh, money management trick, tips and tricks, and apply this to your life to help you manage your money better. So thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.